This is the second video for section 1.2, Finding Euler Circuits. In this lecture, we're going to get some practice with Euler's theorem, which we learned about in the previous lecture. So just as a reminder, Euler's theorem says, if a graph has all even degrees, then it has an Euler circuit. But if the graph has any vertices that have an odd degree, then it does not have an Euler circuit. So we're going to see in this example, in this lecture, many examples of how we apply this theorem. So here we have a graph, and the very simple question, does this graph have an Euler circuit? Remember that what that means is we're asking, is there a way to start at one of the vertices, walk up and down the edges, return to our starting point, where we've covered all of the edges, but we haven't retraced our steps? And so Euler's theorem gives us a way to figure out whether or not we can do that without all the trial and error that we did when we first started thinking about this question. So the Euler's theorem says we need to figure out the degree of each one of these vertices. In other words, for each point here, each of these five labeled points, we need to count how many edges are coming into that point. So for vertex A, the degree is two because there's two edges, this one and this one, coming into A. For vertex B, that degree is three because we've got this one, this one, and this one. And actually at this point we could stop because we know three is an odd number. So we could just say vertex B has degree equal to three, which is odd. So there is no Euler circuit. Right, Euler's theorem says you only need to have one vertex with odd degree and you can't have an Euler circuit for the entire graph. It only takes one. Now, if we had kept going, we would have seen that C also has odd degree. C has degree three, one, two, three edges. D also has degree three, one, two, three edges. And E also has degree three. And so this graph really, really doesn't have an Euler circuit. But as soon as we find one vertex that has an odd degree, we can stop. So here's another example. Again, same question, same kind of procedure. We're gonna go through and count the degree of each of these vertices. So A has degree two because we've got two edges coming into there. B has degree four because we've got one, two, three, four edges coming into B. C has degree two, one, two edges. D has degree two, E is gonna have degree four, and F has degree two. Now, all we got were twos and fours. Those are both uh, even numbers. And so since there are no vertices with odd degree, this is when Euler's theorem tells us that there is an Euler circuit. Now the question says, first of all, it says, is there an Euler circuit, yes or no? But then it asks us to find one if there is an Euler circuit. And what we've seen before in some of our other examples is that when the graph does have an Euler circuit, it's actually usually pretty easy to find. We just sort of pick a starting point and we walk around and it's usually pretty uh, quick to find it. So I'm just gonna kind of randomly decide to start here at D and I'm just gonna start walking along my vertices. So maybe I'll start and go from D up to A so my circuit starts from D and it goes to A. Then I'll go over to B. And then let's see, I'll go over to C. And then now I don't have any choices. I've got to go down to F. Let's keep going. Now I have to go over here to E because I don't want to retrace my steps. Now I'll go up to B, back down to E, and then finally back over to D. So is that the only Euler circuit? Absolutely not. There's lots and lots of them. And again, I encourage you to try this on your own and see if you can come up with one. But that's an example of an Euler circuit that we could find. All right, now this is a slightly different problem. Here, I didn't give you a graph, but we've given you a situation, one of those real world situations. So we've got a city and we've got a river running through the city and we've got several bridges over that river. And so what we wanna know is, is it possible for an inspector to walk across every bridge exactly once and return to their starting point. Well, that's essentially asking whether or not there's an Euler circuit. So if we label these different land masses, maybe I'll call this A and I'll call this B and I'll call this C and I'll call this D. So we can create our graph with those points with or with vertices, I should say, representing those land masses. So we've got A up here, 
B down here. And I'm roughly drawing in the same configuration as they are on the map, just to make it easier. Uh, and then now where are my bridges? Well, let's see, I've got two bridges going from A to C. So I'm gonna have two edges going from vertex A to vertex C. I've got one bridge going from A to D. So I'll have one edge going from A to D. I've got one bridge going from C to D, so I'll draw that. Two bridges from B to C, so I'll draw those. And then I've got one more bridge from B to D. So your graph might not look exactly like that, but it should have four vertices and seven bridges, so seven edges, uh, and it should be in those uh, that configuration. So now that we've got the graph, now this is gonna look just like the examples that we did before. So we're gonna count up the degree of each vertex, so for example, A has degree three. And again, we could just stop at this point, but I'll just go ahead and go through and find all the degrees. So B has degree three, C has degree five, and D has degree three. So again, we see that in fact, none of these vertices have an even degree, but we only need one odd degree to be able to draw our conclusion from Euler's theorem. So since vertex A has degree equal to three, which is odd. This graph does not have an Euler circuit. And that means that our bridge inspector cannot find a way to go through these bridges, return to their starting point without retracing their steps. So next time what we're gonna do is uh, sort of take the next step in these problems. For now, what we've done is when we've seen a graph that doesn't have an Euler circuit, we just say that and then we stop. But what we might like to do, if we consider the previous example, right, that inspector we now know cannot walk over all the bridges without retracing their steps. So we know there's gonna have to be some retracing of our steps. So what we wanna do is try to minimize that. What can we do to find the least number of retraced steps? And that's what we're gonna learn about next time.